Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 84. This episode is Jeff Vita, who is the host of the Kung Fu Drive-In Podcast, which if you're into Kung Fu movies and stuff, it's really good. It's really, really good. He has a lot of interviews with people that have been behind the scenes. Actually, previous guest, Vita and Tran, I found out through the Kung Fu Drive-In Podcast. Uh, He's great. He's also really fun. Uh, to just geek out with, you know, like we're both really big into Kung Fu stuff. So we got to just geek out about that, talked about uh, our favorite movies, uh, different styles of Kung Fu, uh, things that we like to do as a kid, great stories about like training. Uh, I did martial arts for a while. He's currently training in martial arts. Um, So we kind of broke down that. Any injuries, things that we've learned, uh, the difference between seeing something in a movie and practicing it like we did as kids, uh, and then the real world application of maybe it doesn't work out uh, the same way. And uh, we talk about him training uh, now, but also he's like, he's ran some like marathon stuffs, guys. He's done the Spartan race. He's done the Tough Mudder, which I'm convinced is actually just like monitored torture, probably. That's what it sounds like. Uh, but this was fun. This is a good time. He, uh, he's got some great recommendations as well for fellow Kung Fu fans and stuff that's uh, coming around the bend. Uh, yeah, so it's just fun. It's a really good time, guys. So check out the Kung Fu Drive-In Podcast. It is everywhere podcasts are. Um, if you're listening to this, you can probably also get it there. Like I said, you're into Kung Fu? Jeff's your dude, guys. So, uh, without further ado, here is the interesting podcast, episode number 84 with Jeff Vita. Theme song time. I hear you. So you're the same time zone as me. That's different. Where are you at? <laughs> I'm in I'm in Jersey, so Oh, sweet. I'm in Florida. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually um we're actually very big fans of Disney, so we're in Florida every every year, every other year. So Oh, right on. Right on. <laughs> Where in Florida are you? Uh Naples. Okay. So, so I'm about like three and a half hours south of Orlando. Yep. yep. Not too cool. bad, not too bad. It's nice to talk to someone who knows what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh miami has uh we've visited miami a couple of times but otherwise it's orlando and or jacksonville yep that sounds about right i'm in miami all the time for work <laughs> what lot. do you do uh i do a lot of acting stuff over there yeah, yeah yeah cool that's where the big market is so i just shot actually just shot a short film last weekend there in miami nice and, uh whew, cities man ain't, <laughs> ain't, ain't made for them i funnily enough i was just in new jersey Oh, in, really? Yeah, I was in uh, Hackettstown. Okay, wow, we, west, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we landed in Newark and then went and saw a play with uh, Randall Duke Kim. Oh, nice, okay. Y- yeah, he uh, he was doing a play up there, so we're like, oh, we'll fly up there to go see him. Flew into Newark, stayed in Hackettstown, saw the play there, so we're, we're there just it's... two ships passing in the night, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I work in Manhattan, so... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Man, that was unexpected. Manhattan, it's like... You see it in movies, and yep. then you think you have an idea of what it's going to be like. <laughs> Good God, it's it's also deceptively small, but also it big. Is. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like three miles of an island, but it's then so you're not going to get anywhere ever. Yep. Oh, it was it was a learning experience. <laughs> um, that subway, I could I couldn't figure it out. I'm not yeah, you know what? I, I've been here most of my life, and I will still rely on the kindness of strangers to make my way yeah. around. <laughs> I hear that. Are Are you from Jersey? I am. Right on. Right on. So yeah. that makes but sense. I've, I've worked in Manhattan most of my career, so uh, I should know it better than I do. But <laughs> what's the point? Nobody drives, <laughs> you know. I've 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 heard the stories. Uh, you all walk. And that's, Pretty you know, much. you're walking here. I get it. I understand. Yep. There's some truth to movies. 20 uh, or 30 blocks, that's walking distance. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. You know? We we went, uh, like I said, it was, it was end of end of March? I think. Yeah, it was, end of, it was the end of March. It was like the last weekend of March. And there was still snow everywhere. 
And we're like, oh, this will be fine. We'll just walk it. And then you're like, mother of God. Just there's the, <laughs> like <laughs> Central Park is one. You're like, it's not that big. Oh, it's big. Oh, it's big. It's yeah. real big. I, yeah. I learned that by walking it. Uh, <laughs> whew, we man. run races in Central Park. My wife's a marathoner. Um, oh, I what? Don't, yeah, I don't do full marathons. I'll do a half marathon at most. Good I've done Lord. one New York City marathon, and that's all I really need to do in my lifetime. But I hear you. That's one of the, the like mega ones or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the bucket list thing, and I got yeah. it off the bucket list. So that's it. Whew. Dude, you're better than me. I got asthma, so I mean, <laughs> oh. I get, I've got like 30 seconds in me, maybe 45 <laughs> if I'm being chased. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am fast for like 30, 45 seconds. You don't have to be the fastest. You just got to be faster than the guy behind you. That's what I'm saying. I live <laughs> by that, you know. <laughs> Man, I have you done uh, any of those other kind of races? Like I see a little Spartan thing going on. Have you done the Spartan race? I've done the Spartan race. I've done Tough Mudder. I've done. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Killing I like those um, those obstacle races. Um, I don't do a lot of them, but I do. I I did the big ones just. Again, just to get them off the bucket list. That's pretty cool. Do you have a favorite? Which was the hardest one? Um, the Spartan race was my favorite. Tough Mudder was uh, probably a little harder. In Tough Mudder, I think the first obstacle that we faced in the Tough Mudder was uh, two of those long dumpsters um, filled with ice oh, and, what? and water. And you had to jump in and swim to the other end. And they were they oh. were set up so it was two lengths. But Good it was God. so cold that when you jump in, your entire body just shuts down for a second. Yeah. And Sheesh. then you have to kind of gather yourself and swim through it. And then there's all the electric shocks are all over the course, which is ridiculous. But... <laughs> you got to earn that one. Yeah. <laughs> but Spartan Race is a little bit more um, uh, strength and uh, endurance. so. Sure. A little more toward like human beings. Yeah. 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 <laughs> As opposed to like cattle. Pretty much. Man, let's induce <laughs> hypothermia halfway through. We'll really see what you're made of there. Man, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't again, know that. It's, it's fun, and uh, you don't have to do it all the time, but if you get one off the list, then, then you've done you know, it. You can, always, you can always hold that over everybody else. Be like, hey, you know what? I did one. <laughs> Dude, I've done so many things just to say I've done them. Yeah, it's, exactly. <laughs> it's so worth it. I got cornrows once. Uh, oh, no way. <laughs> never, ever doing that again. <laughs> it was awful. My God. I did it for that reason. I was like, you know, why not? I had really long hair at the time. I was like, you know, it'd be kind of funny if I got cornrows. And it was the worst. My, I had them in for like three hours. And then I was like, I think I'm done with this. I pulled them out, had like Diana Ross hair. And then I cut it all off. So, again, yeah, I, I respect it. I have – I will maintain that I originated the mullet. There you go. I had hair that extended – past my butt yeah and then, uh the 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 corresponding mullet part of it um i actually there's a video on my instagram of a uh an appearance that we did when i worked at valiant uh on reading rainbow oh, and you can see part of that what mullet. you worked on oh, yeah. reading rainbow no 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 no. i worked at valiant comics oh that's even better <laughs> that's and awesome then, yeah and they they did a profile of us on reading rainbow oh that's so cool what? So I, I posted the uh, the the clip. Yeah, they set us up and they they came in with their cameras to to profile you know making comics, which yeah. was a, a cool job. Um, and uh, they came through. They had me sit at a uh, at an artist table reading a comic book. I had my mullet in full glory, and uh, I posted that clip on Instagram. And Lavar Burton himself was like, "Dude, if I ever get made fun of for my '80s high top beard, I'm gonna show them this." <laughs> He's like, you make me feel better about my bad decisions. <laughs> That's yeah, it's awesome. A, it's a decision that um, some will say uh, it is bad, but um, I will always maintain that it is um, one of the most glorious haircuts ever. I respect it. I respect it a lot. My my friend's dad had a massive mullet, same sort of thing, and even had like you know the bangs in the front, you know, <laughs> the short hair on the sides, and his his dad was this like old Chinese guy who looked like from Kung Fu movies. And it's like this man 100% came out of the womb kicking. And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he just, yeah, he had this mullet that was the same thing. And he never braided it, never did anything cool with it. This man was free flying all the time. And I was like, dude, that's what I'm talking about. That is, that is yeah. 80s guitar when you wake yeah, up in the morning. Exactly. 
Yeah, uh, when uh, before I chopped it all off, I had hopes of uh, letting it grow all out and then having it go completely white and then yes, uh, uh, getting that white goatee in action. And yes, then, um, pie may. Do it up, Being man. my pie may. Yep, 100% <laughs> agreed. Just start eating fish heads for some reason. Like, what? <laughs> what is going on with Jeff? I don't know. I don't know. That, that was I, the plan. Exactly, yeah. I don't have the subtitles. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Things are getting weird. He's walking on the fences now. Like it's, I'd be more impressed, but I don't know what to take. I don't know how to take it. That's funny yeah. though, dude. Dude. So you. So you're running these marathons and stuff for funsies. Um, <laughs> Not okay. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. So did you? Because I know you from your podcast, which is amazing. Because I'm pretty big into into the whole kung fu stuff as well. Because it's the best. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm seeing I'm seeing a thread here. Uh, you're running marathons. Did you do any martial arts growing up? I didn't. Um, I, I did Taekwondo for, I'm going to say, all of a week and a half when oh, I was impressive. about nine or ten years old. Um, and uh, it was a bad experience at the time because I was – you know, a kid, and the only class that they could put me in was with uh, adults Ooh, or teenage adults. So I was like, "This is not. This is probably not the best fit for me." Sure. And uh, I remember kicking my instructor um, in a very <laughs> painful place. You mean the right and, place? <laughs> yeah. Immediately having to drop down and do fifty push-ups or something like that because I <laughs> because I kicked him. And I was like, you know effective? what? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to make it through this class. So <laughs> Fair, fair. So I stepped away from it there. I have, however, uh, since I've been doing the show, um, I have taken up martial arts again at oh, my I know. ripe old age of 47. <laughs> so um, I'm I am it. now one of the oldest students in the class, but um, I'm uh, I'm holding my own. That's right. And you know where to kick them. So it's like you're already there. I do. <laughs> Halfway. Th- See, you know what? That's effectiveness. You know, yeah. that you pretty much learned everything you needed to learn in that week and a half right? because you took down the sensei. So, hey, all right, you know, slap your hands together. Be like, my work here is done. We, yep. d- we did this all right. I had the same That's experience so with stuff. like uh, with Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mm. did it when I was like 11. I did it for like a week and I was like, mm, better not. <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm good. I think I'm good with this one. And then I, I studied kendo for a long time. Oh, nice! Because I was like, I want to learn to use the sword because that's practical. Yeah. And, and yeah, now, yeah, yeah. you know, as you do, you're like, you know, what? <laughs> you're watching Hook, and you're like, that gold sword is pretty neat. I'm gonna learn to yeah. use a real one. And then you're like, this is, this is totally gonna come in handy, because uh, I live in this century. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I like swords as well. I have a um. We, when uh, when my wife and I got married, we honeymoon in Scotland. Oh, sweet. I took home a uh, two-handed broadsword. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Of course, it's uh, on my wall because, again, like you well, said, I hope so. Really practical. <laughs> yeah, same. I still have my boken up on the wall, and I'm like, man, if anyone comes in here, they're getting wrecked with a wooden sword. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know who they messed with. <laughs> nice. My God. Yeah, that, that. there's your home defense. Like, you ever try to rob <laughs> yeah. a place with a broken nose? I don't think so. You came to the wrong house, friendo. My yeah, God, that's so funny. Yeah. So when did so when did you get the idea for doing a podcast then? Because it's it's a ripe time to be doing like podcasts at all, but specifically right. like ne- more niche ones that are pointed like yeah. yours is. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um. Yeah. I, the podcast when uh, when they first burst onto the scene, um, I was intrigued right away. I was like, oh my God, it's like instant radio. You can do whatever you right? want. And then yeah, for a while I was like, um, I could probably do one but what am i gonna do it on uh and you know i would think about it for a while uh, while i was watching my kung fu flicks at night and you know beating myself up because i had no good idea yeah. <laughs> been there I yeah i did that for like two years and then uh just chilling one night i had uh i had uh five deadly venoms on the computer nice. and i was watching it on that and then a commercial for into the badlands came on the tv <sighs> My God! And uh, there was, uh, it was just one of those moments where it's like the world was screaming, "Here's your podcast idea!" Yeah. And I finally listened. I was like, um, 
maybe. And uh, <laughs> yeah. then I thought, I was like, you know what? It, the the seventies kung fu thing is was such a was such a niche because that's only going to make sense to people who are diehard kung fu film fans and are of a certain age, right? It's true. Uh, you know, people that uh, that grew up in the eighties and nineties uh, know blood sport and so on yep. forward. Yeah, they don't necessarily know who Kuo Choi is or who T Long is or David Chang or, or all those guys. So right, um, I was like, you know, I'm going to record this. I'm going to talk about it, and then uh, I'll sit on it for like a week and see if uh, if it makes sense. Um, so I did that. I did. The, I recorded the first one with whatever equipment I had on hand. Sure. And if you listen to this episode you'll hear, you'll hear the horrendous quality. But, um. I'm with you there, man. Sheesh. Anytime someone finds a show, I'm like, start at episode like 25. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but whatever. And I, I did it and I listened to it. I was like, I, you know, if I was a fan of Kung Fu films, I might find this interesting. Right. So I sat for like a couple of days and I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to release it and see what happens. Um, there you go. And I did. And, uh, you know, like a day later, I was like, 11 people listen to this? What? Boom. And then it just, so I was like, all right, well, so let's give it a try. And the, the show evolved from there. It went from doing recaps and summaries and reviews of, of films and, and uh, short films, uh, stuff that I found on YouTube and things like that, to uh, to talking to celebs. So Yeah, and you're killing it, man. <laughs> Thanks. Killing it. Thank you. you. You know, it's kind of funny to think about. Like, people that are into... Uh, martial arts movies and kung fu videos and stuff like that. It's like we've all got this part of our brain that's like, I really like watching this. I'm gonna go down the YouTube rabbit hole, and it's yeah. all and it's always been there for us. Like I remember yeah. being like my freshman year in high school. There was this video. What was it called? It might have been called Urban Ninja. I'm not sure. And it was just a dude dressed in all black, like ninja garb, doing parkour to like Headstrong by Trapped. And I was like, this is the best <laughs> thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and then and then people doing like choreography to like uh the matrix soundtracks yeah and it's just it's always there and it it's it's great that like youtube and the internet and things it's like oh we all have this thing that we kind of like did on our own and now we're kind of meeting each other yeah. it's kind of cool it's absolutely awesome i've met so many cool people from that side of the creative spectrum that uh you know don't necessarily have access to that hollywood power right um, but are doing some amazing things with just youtube and you know what whatever camera they have on hand and uh you know these guys are the ones that are going to be that voice for the next generation so 100 percent, absolutely love that that there's still somebody out there putting some stuff together I agree. And with the technology getting better and better and yeah. information becoming more accessible, it's like film schools becoming irrelevant because you can just Google it. You're like, yeah. oh, that's yeah. how you do it, you know? <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> that's fun. It's fun. It's really fun to see. I like. Do you like picking out, like, when you're watching kung fu movies and whatnot, when they change up their style, you're like, ooh, ooh, that's yeah. Mantis. Here we go. Yes, it, yes. That that fun. was always a fun thing to do. Just uh, when what when you're you know again I'm I'm older so uh, watching the those seventies kung fu flicks you, you, they would present you with you know a style. It would be hey this is Mantis versus Tiger right. So right. you look at those styles. As soon as somebody switched, boy, you were like oh this is something <laughs> completely new. Yeah. What am I learning? <laughs> he took a drink. <gasps> yeah. It's drunken fist. Oh my god. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That was always the fun part, right? And whenever I loved the the ones, the movies where they would uh, uh, a big part of the plot would be them developing a new style. Yes, hundred you know, percent. So it would be like, hey, I, I'm I'm in the woods and I need to develop a different style. So uh, I'm going to take this piece of bamboo and I'm going to uh, string it together with this thing. And oh my god, it's a new weapon, you know right. that kind of thing. <laughs> same, same. You're like, wait, the, oh, is he making a comma? Oh. Yeah, same. Yeah, it's so exciting, and it's like this free form kind of. It's almost like kung fu movies allow a little bit more absurdity to the creative process. You're like, no, yeah. they're just gonna be flying. Like, like <laughs> when you th <laughs> when you think about like, I mean, it's more close. It's more contemporary uh, in relation, but like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I mean, yep. that is a straight up art piece, and there's yeah. people like screaming and jumping on water, and you're just like, it's yep. so beautiful. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's so cool. 
it's so yeah cool. that whole the whole wuxia uh genre uh that Agreed. allowed for more that wire work and the fantasy and some a lot of those supernatural elements it's a whole different ball of wax but so so much fun to watch i agree i like it i like when they lean into it a little bit yeah you know and it's like oh we are, like that's what i dude into the badlands mm. is one of the greatest tv shows of all time I'll I'll give it the ribbon. And <laughs> it's one of those that like especially this season, uh yeah. I mean dude, it was a crime that it got canceled. But this season yep. they really leaned into like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, wirework stuff, like jumping off of blades and stuff. I'm like, yeah. this is the best. What is happening? Andy Chang and, and B Dan Tran I Jeez. you had B Dan Tran just recently. I did. The yeah. best. Great guy. Um but yeah, they uh, they have that whole uh, mentality uh, behind them, and they know what uh, what it takes to pull that stuff off and not have it look ridiculous. Right. Um, so it it looks it looks so great, and that world that was already in place just got so much bigger and so it much did. better this season. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm sorry it's going, but um, I'm still hopeful that there's an avenue for it to return. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, they have to, right? With something that good, I would hope so. You know, I mean, Daniel Wu's, he's uh, he's teasing a little bit of merch around the corner. So I'm like, yeah. hey, man, I'll yeah. buy it. Just just yeah. give me more, please. <laughs> it's Take be my good. money. I know. Just here. Just throw it at them. Yeah. It's so good. But uh, you're you're exactly right. When you get people that are like V-Dan and Andy Chang and, and you know, Master DD and like these yeah. legends working, it's like, I don't know. It's really cool. It's, I yeah. love how different it is, but it's also an ode to old kung fu movies and done right i don't know like i feel like saying done right isn't the right choice of words but i think yeah. you get what i mean you know what I mean? yeah, it feel, yeah feels true to the form yeah but yet still yeah. being mad max meets kill bill oh yeah it's so, so cool. good so cool and they're doing crazy stuff too like that thing that v dan posted with like the camera coming from the second floor on a wire and he catches <laughs> yeah. it i was like yeah. what is happening <laughs> you guys are incredible yeah man it's um that whole uh, that whole daredevil approach to it all, uh, I think, is is what gives this show so much flavor. Because uh, I agree. you know they 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 broke a lot of the rules to begin with. There's you know an Asian leading man. It's about martial arts. Who wants to see a martial arts TV show uh, in these days anyway? And you know uh, with that with the compressed time schedule of a, of a TV show to make it look as cinematic as they do, they have to come up with these ridiculous ways of doing things. I agree. Keeps it fresh. Yeah. And then they keep pushing the envelope season after season and, Oh, it's so good. It's so <laughs> good. So do you, so do you have a favorite Kung Fu movie? I feel like you can't, but you probably um, do. I do only because, um, it's the one that kicked it off for me. Good so point. five deadly venoms will be, will always be my, top kung fu film one a would be the 36 chambers of shaolin Ooh, good one. you know so it, and, and it will it will vacillate it'll be one or the other any given day but if i had to choose one it would be the five deadly venoms because that movie uh anytime it's on i will stop i will drop everything and i'll just watch it yeah yep um just uh because there's such a big nostalgia factor with that film uh for me for uh, for guys in my generation, on Saturday afternoons at three o'clock on, on what was Channel Five at the time, uh, there was Kung Fu Drive-In Theater. Right. Uh, you know, on, on uh, hence the title. I see what you did there, Jeff. <laughs> exactly. So um, that was uh, that was church for a lot of us. Sure. Uh, and it was an introduction to uh, this other world that was populated with the analog of superheroes at the time these guys could fly they could stick to walls they could um pierce metal oh, with your fingers right. i never you thought know? about that yeah and i was like oh my god this is the world that i want to live in and i'm asian uh so these guys on tv looked like me and i was like hey right i want to be these guys there you know, so and that that's that's what started it off and at, every saturday afternoon at three o'clock i was planted in front of the tv to see the next bunch of superheroes that i could be like that's so cool it's like friday it's like saturday morning cartoons we've got yeah. saturday afternoon kung fu yeah and that was that was the way it worked it would be saturday morning cartoons till about noon and then you would get uh i don't know what it was it was like uh um it was some kind of uh nature show of course and then gotta learn a little, a little. Bit, yeah <laughs> you'd wait a little bit and then it 
at around three o'clock, you would either get Kung Fu Drive-In Theater or you would get um, Horror Chiller Theater. Ooh, which is like the Universal Monster stuff. That's a good. Either one, one was either one was great. Yeah, but <laughs> I wanted the Kung Fu. <laughs> fair, fair. You got to <laughs> learn how to fight the monsters in the event that it's the horror one. Exactly. I get it. Covering the bases. <laughs> was there was there a style? Growing up, that you always wanted to learn, because I found uh, I did. Like you're like this. This is the one that like if I could learn this, then I would achieve the enlightenment I've always dreamed of. <laughs> you know, there was uh, there was always uh, three styles that came up right off the bat whenever we would come together and play. Talk to me. Somebody wanted to be a monkey. Good one. Somebody wanted to be the drunken monk. Always. Somebody wanted to be tiger. Of course, the aggressive. So, that was the, you know, that was, the, those were the ones that you fought for uh, right off the bat. And then uh, when Five Deadly Venoms um, reached more people, that's when we were like, oh, well, I'm going to be the Scorpion and I'll be the same. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'll be the, you know, uh, and uh, the that, world's uh, open. somebody, somebody inevitably would be, well, I'm going to be the hybrid because I could do everything. Of course. There, oh, wait, there's always that guy, isn't it? <laughs> always. It's like, wait a second, that was a tiger hit. And you're like. Yeah, but you're monkey. No, you can't get to do tiger if you're monkey. These are the rules that we've established. Right. Like, no, I, I went to two temples and then it just punched in the mouth. You're like, <laughs> yeah, what is exactly. happening? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I got. I remember sparring one time with a buddy of mine, and he punched me right in the ear. And I'm gonna mm. tell you what, it hurt. Oh yeah. It hurt real bad. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought about that, but I just had a little flashback there. I was like, you're breaking the rules. Did Punch you get me. hit with? His Ooh. knuckles, because yeah, yeah. that's gonna sting. Well, I got clunked right in like the side of the like battering ram. He was a big guy too. I was like, "What are you doing? We're not friends anymore." Just kidding. But man, <laughs> so what? I, so these are things that I've learned that I'm passing on now, as through my PTSD flashbacks. Ah. Uh, punch someone in the ear. It works. It hurts real yeah. bad. It's, mm. a, it's a good public service you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to commit assault, this is guaranteed to ruin someone's day. And then 10 years later, when they remember it, it will also ruin their night. Yeah. Punch them in the ear. That and the accidental punch to the nose that makes your eyes tear up. Oh, dude. Then, yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> Been there. Sheesh. So now, so with, uh, which, which of the three did you end up with more often than not? Or did you, did you like to mix it up? Um, I liked being monkey. Good one. Um, that just looked the, the, the coolest, um, if 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 I couldn't be Snake, Snake wound up being Ooh, becoming one of the big one. ones. Yeah, because uh, you know, I, you make the noise with your mouth and oh yeah, got the whole hand up. Thing. Yeah, you do the cool <laughs> thing. But yeah, Monkey was um Monkey was uh, just a fun one to do because there's a lot of bouncing around and rolling and stuff. So that uh, that was always my choice. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I remember trying to get into Bagua for a while. Mm. I was like this is gonna be the best. Uh, then I found out my feet don't work that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I all circle walking and. You know, <laughs> Neji from Naruto makes it look really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Cartoon. Exactly, yeah. It's 128 palms. I was like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> totally. That's real. <laughs> Somebody's just going to let you hit them 64 times. That's yeah. how that's going to work. Yeah, apparently Monkey Kung Fu is one of the hardest styles to to, to learn. Really? Uh, and it, uh, Yeah, I, uh, Michael Matsuda... Uh, the curator yes. of martial arts museum was on my show, and he's a uh, like a super high level grandmaster of monkey kung fu. What I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's one of the original. He's in the original lineage for uh, monkey kung fu. What? Yeah. So. Dude. But uh, he said that the dropout rate is really high because people come in thinking they're going to do all this cool, you know, bouncing around monkey stuff, um, and it's uh, it's rough on your ankles and your knees because you're always crouched down and you're doing uh some really hardcore balancing and and body manipulation so sure. so the dropout is really really high but if you stick with it you know then you're you're especially if you stick with it with him then you're you wind up being in that that super rare lineage so isn't that interesting how that kind of works too like that's another thing i feel like a lot of people who haven't done martial arts before uh don't realize is lineage is a thing yeah. It's not like you go to a specific dojo and you're like, all right, yeah, I went to, I learned off of Pine Ridge Road. It's like, no, you <laughs> learn from this guy who learned from this guy who learned from this guy, and you can trace it back. Yeah. Like, I remember I did Shorn Rue for a couple of years. Okay. And that was one thing. It was like, 
My sensei's name was Kevin. His sensei was Alton Martin, trained by Stephen Dyer, trained by this dude in Japan who originated nice. from this. And it was like, you get this big thing, and then you start like connecting other lines like a f- weird family tree. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I remember that my teacher's teacher was also a teacher of Jason David Frank. So we could all be Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And yeah. we would like every time it came up to like Kiai, we'd just be ah, just doing Power <laughs> Ranger noises. <laughs> oh, I wish. Uh, you know, you know, it's I mean, it was baby steps, baby yeah. steps. You know, there's that alternate reality where we're like, hey, you know, one of your teachers, he may have also trained mine. That makes us brothers. <laughs> and you grab his forearm, and then he gives you the dragon flute because that's how this works. Yeah. In the situation, but yeah, that's an interesting thing. Is, is lineage as far yeah. as like who trains who for what and it also kind of reminds me of did you ever see uh what was it called? bulletproof monk yeah okay when sean william scott talks about yeah i learned at the golden palace yeah. and, <laughs> and it's just the movie theater he worked at and he's just yeah. seen so many <laughs> he's seen so many kung fu movies he picked it up i was like hey that's gonna be me <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, you know, for again, for for those of us who who watch kung fu movies, um, if you're not imitating what you see on screen and and lying to yourself that you're learning, you're not really watching kung fu movies. One hundred percent agreed. <laughs> if you're not watching Kung Fu Panda and then yeah. going out and being Tigress, I don't have time for you. I just yeah. don't. All right, you need you need to come to me when you're serious about this stuff. Exactly. Yep. You Same. Know. You know. Uh, yeah, you get it. <laughs> you know, you're, you've you've done a lot of time doing monkey style, all right? So as far as I'm concerned, you got a pretty good handle on it. Yeah. You know, well, you, you get your 10, I know you're hours. a Star Wars fan, so you know <laughs> that it, anytime you have a stick, it's a lightsaber, and you 100%. swing that. 100%. Yeah. Obviously. What else would it be? <laughs> Don't be dumb, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Dude, I, I'm with you, though. It's, it's interesting. I always wanted to do uh, – uh, what was it? Um, Wing Chun. Yeah, it's just like one of those styles, especially with like Ip Man. You're like, this is the style. Like, this oh. is the one that will defeat all of them. And then you realize <laughs> that, like, I I always remember Bruce Lee had this quote where he talked about like, there are no good martial arts, just martial artists. Yeah. And I was like, yep. that's a kick in the pants. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> for, and for anyone that's like, this style is the one, because you know, there's the the adage, you know, you're familiar with. Uh, yeah. Your kung fu may be good, but mine is better. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, right. you're like, oh, it's the style, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, again, I, you, you think that there's one style that will will reign over all, but um, having done the show and talking to as many people as I have, uh, everybody has strengths. Everybody has weaknesses, and seeing it in action from movie to movie, I'm like, wow, there's so much to learn. And there's so much I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a, like the more you know, the more you realize is you don't know it. Yeah. I said that it, with grace. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's um, that's what makes a lot of these guys, uh, you know, lifelong students. It's not it's not go till you have a black belt and then you're good and you're set. Right. It's, it's true. Go till you have a black belt and then start the journey uh, to learn something new and continue to develop and continue to grow. Um, and a lot of these guys that are, that are in these, that are in these films or that, uh, have developed their, their skill to such a level challenge themselves by doing another style or learning a different, uh, a completely different, uh, set of skills so that they can continue to better themselves. And that's, that's true Kung Fu. I agree. I agree. And when you learn that, like no situation is going to be the way that you practiced it, it's like it's, it's like yeah. there's there's real life here. Like but like Vidan, he was a, he was the most recent one I talked to, and he he mentions that you know he grew up doing wushu for a really long time, and then his first movie he did was Skyfall, yeah. and all those guys did like kickboxing and wrestling, and yeah. he's like, I'm yeah. getting punched in the face, and I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, but you know what? He can hold that sword like a boss. Yeah, damn right he can. <laughs> <laughs> he can jump so high. It's like, if they can hit him, yeah, then it's, yeah. then it's game over. But you gotta hit him first, you know. Right. God, that's that's a hard lesson to learn from anyone who's into kung fu. When you're like, oh wait, this block that I saw work a million times in the screen. That guy's <laughs> big and physics are a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean you're not gonna stand still while I practice? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I remember coming home one day, 
And we learn this move in Shornru, and like, I'll be honest, half of it, that's not going to work in real life, let's be honest. Sure. It looks cool, but oh, yeah. there's no way I'm catching somebody's fist, all right? Yeah. <laughs> and that needs, that needs to happen for this next move to go. And they also right. can't resist in the meantime. Yeah. I remember I had this, like, I, there was this move where, like, you catch somebody's fist, and then you kind of bend it backwards, and then you just walk, and mm. their legs kind of fall behind them because your body has this knee-jerk reaction. And it's cool, and yeah. it does work. If everything happens in the sequence it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I remember coming home and I was really excited about it. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be taking people out just like this. They're gonna try to punch me. I was like, no, sir. And <laughs> and I remember telling my dad, I was like, Oh, I got this really cool move and he goes, Huh. Why don't you try that on me? And <laughs> and my dad's this dude that's like lived a hundred lives, been yeah. around, fought in Vietnam, like all this stuff. <laughs> Great dude. But he was like, why don't you try that on me? I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I just did it like eight times in class, worked every time. Let's do this. And to this day, I don't know what he did. Yeah. But I ended up on the ground. Yeah. My arm was twisted back. His foot was on my face, and I was just yelling <laughs> for my mom. And I was like, what is happening? You're and not was... supposed to use the other hand, Dad. <laughs> exactly. You're supposed to let me do it. <laughs> That's what he did in class. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, tough I one. know. Tough one. <laughs> tough lesson to learn. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I'm intrigued by uh, all of those, you know, street ready uh, disciplines like Krav Maga. Yeah, or, right. Um, or Eskrima, which, uh, which if you teaches you to you know, grab a stick and just beat the crap out of somebody with them. You know, um, I'm going to actually be learning Eskrima. Um, oh, sweet. Too. So uh, as a as a Filipino, I, I felt it was um, imperative that I got a little bit of that uh, uh, part of my culture in the training. There you so. go. You might be like already predisposed to it. You just don't know. Yeah, you know, yeah, we'll like, see. It's like you know the Maori have the mana. Yeah. Like, what if the Philippines have something like that? You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I had we'll a guy. See. I had a guy on my show a few years ago. Now his name was uh, Bill Porter, and he was like three time world champion Eskrima, mm. and that dude. Wait, I remember talking to him once. I was like, okay, so you're at the World Championships. We're talking like Dragon Ball Z, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you're about to get into this for the title for, of World Champion. Two guys get into the ring. One of you guys walks out the World Champion. I was like, what are you thinking? He goes, honestly, I'm looking at that guy, and I'm saying he's in my ring. And I was like, ooh, ooh, that's good. Nice. That's good. <laughs> we'll write that down really quick. He's in my <laughs> ring. All right, Goku. I was like, oh, oh man. <laughs> Sheesh. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, that's practical, learning to hit someone with a stick. If you can find one, it's game oh, on. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you give me a wooden it, sword, it is mm -hmm. it is game over, my friend. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the idea is just to be able to grab whatever's near you and just make it a weapon, right? So, exactly. You know? You're in a pool hall, that pool cue is done. Up someone's nose. Game right? <laughs> over. Some people ain't going home looking the same way. You know? <laughs> I, that's why I only hang out in pool halls now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to George find your halls. strengths. Yes, exactly. <laughs> People have strengths and weaknesses. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> use your use your environment around you. you Good know, call. Like, yeah, it's Good like call. number one, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> you control the environment. You control the whole game, right? Boom. You know what? That's what I've heard. <laughs> My God. This is why I get beat up so much. Yeah, it's the same. Oh man, I've lost <laughs> so many fights, dude. <laughs> that's like, that's how you learn. I keep telling myself. Uh, yeah. Sheesh, man, you sure. learn some. You learn the hard way, going that way. Yeah. She and <laughs> and that's another thing. So like, you started training, uh, like yeah. like a year ago, I think it was, because I, I remember yeah, when the yeah, episode came out. Yeah. yeah. So right on. First off, that's amazing. Uh, secondly, how's it going? It's going well. Um, uh, I I really enjoy it, and uh, I'm. My with my old age, uh, hey, comes the old age of seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's just a focus that that I have now that I'm sure I, I would have pissed away if I was younger and sure and felt take on the world, you know. But um, uh, I'm I'm able to focus more and and do uh, a lot more with uh, concentrating and and getting the the right um, getting the right moves in so that I. A don't hurt myself and and B represent the 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 style well. You know, I think I think sure. I'm and I think I'm doing a good job of that. I'm at a purple belt now. I'll be a blue belt soon. Oh right on, dude! Congrats. So, yeah, thanks. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know that that really means anything. It just means that I'm going to class and doing what I need to do. You know what I mean? It's a progress so, marker to be like you've, yeah. you. Yeah, it's an attendance, and also yeah, it's pretty, there's tests. You pass the test. Yes, I'll give Absolutely. you the credit for it. You know. <laughs> you know, but if I did, if I never got past the white belt and just kept learning, I'd be okay with that. There you go. So that's the way to be. Because yeah. if you put too much importance on the belt, then you're like, what are you gonna do? Beat him with your belt? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you wanna. <laughs> You want to you wanna learn. Have you, have you sustained any injuries? Because you seem to be pretty uh, conscious of it ahead yeah, of time. I'm, I, I, haven't, I haven't had any major injuries. I, I threw a punch wrong once, and I felt that shock through my wrist. Ooh, yep. And that side for like a, a couple of days. I was like, man, that, I don't ever want to feel that again. That was really cool. <laughs> yep, yep. But, I, uh, I remember you made a video a bit ago where you talked about, like, have you ever tried to throw a kick and miss? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hundred yeah. percent when you commit oh, yeah. and you do not connect. <laughs> yeah. You, I was, that's not good. Oh, no, no, it isn't. It looks terrible in class. Too. <laughs> it just looks yep. Yep. You're like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, Oh no. <laughs> I was just showing you what you're not supposed to yeah, do. Yeah. I mean, it's, you're an example one way or another, you know, so <laughs> learning I'm into it. Yeah. Sheesh. What, what style is it? It's based in Kempo, right on. Um, but it's a hybrid system. So it, I'm learning Kempo. There's a little bit of Jiu-Jitsu in there. There's a little bit of Taekwondo. There you go. Um, I'm learning uh, nunchucks and scrim sticks, what? Um, just as a basis. So I'm I'm getting a, a a good mix of stuff that, when you put it into play, seems like it would be really practical in a street fight. Uh, sure. I'm not gonna put it to the test anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. But. <laughs> That's but uh, the, the the base of it is Kempo, so it's uh, it's it's worked out for me so far. There you go, there you go. And from what I know, Kempo's super defensive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. uh, it's it's just protecting yourself and and being able to counter quickly. There you go, there you go. I like it, I like it a lot. Sheesh, man. I say I think about when you're like you don't want to test it out anytime soon. Probably <laughs> best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. But that's the funny thing about martial arts is like. Outside of the, you know, the exercise, the the mental betterment as well. It's like, I remember Joe Rogan talked about one time. He's like, I've spent half my life training for something that I hope never happens. I was like, yeah, yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. It, the um, One of the first things that uh, I learned uh, was, you know, you, you want to have this stuff in your back pocket and you never want to have to use it. Yep. Right. But it's better to have it and never need it than to need it and not have it at all. That's right. I totally agree. I I remember one of our first days at Shore and Rue, he talked about he's like I'm going to give you the honest uh the honest rundown because it was like our it was like me and I think three others it was our first day so he was like okay I've got a few new students here's the deal step number 1 you're not going to be kicking any guns out of hands it's not right, going to happen right. <laughs> and we're like oh okay well I'll see you later <laughs> and he goes also uh the greatest uh form of self defense against a gun is cooperation we're like okay <laughs> exactly <laughs> Like I already enjoy this, <laughs> yeah. But then I'll never forget the day because we trained. He actually trained outside of a like in his backyard. He had like a a farm there, and he had like a sand pit dug out. So we were going there and use the sand pit, and he had bags and all kinds of stuff. And I remember one time he had a bag up, and while he was over with the other students, I punched it. It was like one of my first days in class, mm -hmm. and to see the fear in my eyes. When he was coming toward me, uh, <laughs> dude, I think it might have been the most scared I've ever been. Because <laughs> I was like, you know, oh, there's a bag here. I'm just going to boop. And yeah. it was like, ooh, when you talk about, like, there's ways that you do things specifically. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Ooh, he's like, so if you were going to another dojo, would you just pick up a sword and start swinging it? Yeah. I was like, yeah. no, no, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> And he's like, don't do that. I was like, okay, yes, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, full body <laughs> tense. Sheesh. And that was a style as well that we we would start every session with iron body training. So mm. he would pair us up with someone, and then we would do 10 hits to each other. So, like, hit our forearms together and then do the other forearms. And then the insteps, the inside of our, like, upper leg, you just kick it 10 times, get 10 kicks to the stomach each time. And after a while, it didn't hurt anymore. And you're like, all right, cool. But the first time you do it, yeah. you limp for two weeks. <laughs> and if you're me, 
uh, you get paired with like one of the highest ranking people in there. <laughs> and you're like, this isn't going to be so bad. He'll take it easy on me. Uh, no, he's mean. He's very mean. He doesn't take it easy on you. And you're like <laughs> limping to school the next few days. Like, oh, no, I'm, I'm learning martial arts. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> well, you're doing a bad job there, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God. So how, how knowing knowing that, uh, how long did it? Because you see, you've done these marathons and stuff like that. So you're a pretty physical guy. So was yeah. there like a physical learning curve when doing martial arts? We're like, oh, these are muscles I've not used in this way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just because it's it's all movement that that I, you know when I was envisioning in my head when I was watching those movies, I could do flawlessly. But of course, you know, got so much yeah. practice in. <laughs> <laughs> but actually trying to make my body do that stuff in real life. Oh, you know, yes. Took a crane and uh, several burly guys. Cause it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I can't, I, I just couldn't move that way. Um, but, uh, you know, flexibility and, and um, pliability of those muscles and, and those tendons, yeah, that, that, that doesn't come overnight. No, no, it doesn't. So. I still can't touch my toes. Yeah, it's, sheesh. That's, that's the kind of stuff where I was like, yeah, you know what? I, I probably should stretch for much, much longer before I try any of this stuff. But... Yeah, stretching. Yeah. <laughs> before martial so... arts, uh, stretching? Uh, all right. I'm, I guess I'll do that arm yeah. thing across your chest. That counts. Yeah, that's what I thought. But uh, yeah, it's um, that, the one the, that one cramp that you get because you extended just a little bit too much that doesn't go away for a while, That's that'll learn you real fast yeah yeah that's a, so... that is a constant reminder of like don't do this <laughs> you're like oh okay i'm sorry your body, yeah, your body but i, I mean i mean. am physical i try i do try to stay in shape uh running and um and hitting the gym and all that is, is all well and good but completely different muscles completely different movements yep um so it's true it, you're not it took punching getting the weights to... <laughs> yeah you yeah. know it's like you can lift a ton but uh like you said <laughs> commit and miss and we'll yeah. see how, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Very different uh, cool down uh, for, oh, yeah. for one to the other. Jeez. do you? So do you? Do you have a a, a current or all time favorite uh, kung fu star? I'm asking uh, the hard questions here. I like to make yeah. left turns. You're like, oh, what? What's going on? <laughs> Beware! Um, pa, pa, pa. I mean, Bruce Lee will always be the the, best, the, uh, right? the top of the mid, right? Just be. Uh, he so. Uh, impactful, so um, a, a cultural icon for, for many, uh, j beyond martial arts too. But totally, especially agreed. for those of us who who, uh, who followed kung fu films, um, Jet Li was oh uh, yes a completely new thing when I first discovered him. Jackie Chan is a another completely different beast <sighs> for real. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's impossible to to find a favorite, right? Um, this was a true because, question in your past. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, the 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 movies that that stick with me will be the the ones that have those guys in it. You know, uh, Drunken Master, um, Fist of Fury, Thirty Six Chambers for uh, for Gordon for Gordon Liu. Uh, yeah. You know, all, all those guys, they all they all had some kind of impact, and they all have left um, some impression on what has become my fandom. So. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Dude, do you remember when Jet Li for like first came on the scene and there was like a big deal about like he was so fast the cameras couldn't catch it? Yes. I yeah. was like, ooh, all right. You're like, Bruce Lee, who'd win, Bruce Lee or Jet Li? And you're like, ooh, in, yeah. a, in a fast contest, it'd be Jet Li. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, his, uh, he, he was so fluid. And then uh, that was one of those – uh, instances where it's like, well, what style does he study? He studies wushu, right? What the hell is wushu? <laughs> yeah. Like the mountain style, like <laughs> crouching tiger, hidden trap. That's Jet Li. You're like, yeah. yeah. And then you start make the best part is speculating who would win in a fight, right? So you oh, had yeah. to you had to set the parameters. So you're like, all right, who'd win in a fight? Bruce Lee always. Okay, in a fast fight, Jet Li. Okay, but if it's in a room <laughs> full of furniture, Jackie Chan is untouchable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, nobody Black can Belt use an magazine. ottoman as a weapon better than Jackie Black, Chan. Right, right, right. <laughs> Black Belt Magazine just uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, did a one of those uh, March Madness type um, tournaments uh, with martial artists, and oh, their first what? round, their first round, first round, first bracket was Bruce Lee Jet Li. What? 
And I was like, well, how does that even happen? That's the what most the ridiculous world? round ever. <laughs> They're like, we, we just want to like level the playing field for everyone yeah. else. We <laughs> yeah. got to take one of these guys out right away. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, is that a fast contest or is it? Okay, okay, got it. Okay, yep, got it. One hundred percent. Yep, dude, I remember the one. <laughs> oh yeah. I referenced that movie so much. I'm like, yep. dude, it. You just kill the other one, and then you get stronger. That's, that's yeah, how yeah, yeah. this works. So good. Yep. I think that was the movie where I was like, he really does move so fast. <laughs> the cameras can't catch it. Look at how fast he's moving. Everything else is moving slow. Like yeah. as a kid, I thought it was real for a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, my and, first movie with him was Fist of Legend. Ooh, good one. Yeah. Good one. Um, and then uh, then I I went through his back catalog, and then Hero. Hero is so good. The game for me with him. That's another one. That's like ju- using a sword to jump on water, and you're <laughs> like crazy stuff, and you're like, this is the best. And yeah. Donnie Yen's in that one. Yeah, dude, I love so Donnie good. Yen. Yeah, he's love- so good. Ip Man is like. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's and, so good. and like all the dude, even all three of them. And I love Sam Hung. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that dude, what I like about him is he's a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> and yet he's like, you know, one of the masters that's in all these things. And I remember uh I remember Michelle Yeo, who is, you know, a living legend yep. in and of herself. Uh she was talking about working with Sam O one time and she's like, he's a crazy person. And I was like, what? And she's like, he was go to the, all the stuntmen. It was like, you need to really hit me. And oh, yeah. And I was yeah. like, what? It's like, yeah. dude. And then one would get him real good. He goes, okay, hit me less. You're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Richard Norton was on my show, and he's um he was the, the, the bad guy in the Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars. Oh, yes. So, yes. Yeah. And he talked about working with Samo, and it was the same kind of thing. He was like, you know, these guys expect – uh, you to be able to take the hits, and uh, he Samo asked him to hit him uh, oh. really hard. So uh, he so he hit him, uh, and you know he made contact and uh, is fine. They had some. Uh, he, he actually did see some stars for a little bit, but then <laughs> Samo had to hit him, and all he had, all that Richard had in his mouth was you know like a wadded up cotton or whatever. Oh, no. And he thought, you know, I, I'm going to pull my punch the same way that I, he's going to pull his punch the same way that I pulled it for him. Oh no! Sam didn't pull that punch so much. Oh no! He's, he's, he's like, it sent him into the wall. And, <laughs> but that's the kind Sheesh. of uh, dedication that Hong Kong filmmaking expected of you, especially if you were a hardcore martial artist. Yeah, that was something Vidan touched on when we talked. Yeah. He was like, he's like, I know maybe three people in all of Germany that could survive. A Hong Kong movie. I was like, fair. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Sheesh. It's so good. There's some good stuff coming out. That's why I'm really glad, like, with Into the Badlands. It's yep. one of those things. It just scratches that itch. You know what yeah, I mean? We, and it's contemporary, yeah. and it's like, they're still keeping that flame alive. I think it's pretty cool. There's uh, there's some good stuff coming down the line, too. I can't wait. What was it? Wu Assassins? Wu Assassins. Ooh, uh, it's going to be great. Some- well, uh, Warrior right now is really good. Warrior? If you, if you, yeah, Warrior uh, on Cinemax. Oh. Based on uh, the original treatments uh, that Bruce Lee. What? Uh, yeah. It, it, he put down uh, this stuff for a TV series in the late, uh, early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, I think it was. Really? But um, yeah, it was what I'm, what I'm. If I'm misremembering, I apologize, but I think it was some of the original notes for what eventually became Kung Fu with David Carradine. What? Yeah. That's so, so cool. It's yeah, called so, Warrior. Okay, it's I'm, called I'm Warrior. writing it down right now. Right now, they're on. They're they're only four episodes in. Sweet. But it, it uh, focuses on the Tong Wars in 1800 San Francisco. Oh, what? Yeah, and uh, the the cast is. Amazing. Uh, Andrew Koji plays the lead. Oh, Jason Tobin, one of the other guys. Um, Joe Taslim is in the is in the show. Uh, Olivia Chang, Diane Dewan. Uh, they are uh, they play you know, these um, these uh, Chinese immigrants that come over to America and they you know they're they're doing their thing and they're trying to survive in this uh, San Francisco that uh, doesn't quite like Chinese people. Yeah. And then the, the Tong Wars are going on, and there's uh, the the Long Z and the 
hop away and it's it's so good dude i'm yeah, so down it. i'm so andrew, down. andrew koji does such a, a nice job of channeling what what i imagine was bruce's character when he envisioned this yeah and he throws some beat downs it's, it's such good stuff that's so cool Dude, I love it. And when it good fight choreography, like there's nothing like it. Oh yeah. Like, when done right, you can tell when it's like, like I remember watching some behind the scenes thing once when they said like if an actor couldn't do the fight choreography, it, like for some reason it just wasn't it, they weren't feeling it. They yeah. would add a ton of cuts. It'd yeah. just be real fast and real fast, and that was a way of kind of compensating. Uh, but when you see like really well done fight mm-hmm. scenes, it's just cool. Oh yeah, and and. The audiences that uh, that are keen to that stuff are really savvy. They they'll know if you're you're trying to cover it with really bad cuts or dark lighting or it's true, you know, or, or if you pull away so that you're watching somebody from the back. It, yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's um when when you get skilled people in there, you can show the action and have that action speak for itself, and that's that charge that we get. You know, as fans, we're like, man, that stuff looks so good because they're doing it. They're doing it for real right there on screen. You can see it all. I agree. I agree. But if you're uh, if you're pulling an iron fist on us and ah, oh, dude, for real. So. Oh man, <laughs> what a oh. Speaking of punch to the chest, that's that was the one I was most excited for out of the so defenders. So excited for it. So excited uh, for it. I mean, he punched a semi truck. That was cool, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, Daredevil. On the other hand. Oh yeah, that's one that they did like full sequences, fighting a bunch of people. Like, oh, it was really good, really, really well done. And they the the editing on that was out of this world. I agree, I agree. That's so cool. We got good stuff. We got uh, we fans. We got we got a lot of good stuff to look forward to. Now (laughs) it's a good time to be a fan. There, it is. It is. I think it is. And uh, you know, hopefully there's um, hopefully there's more stuff to come. Shang Chi from Marvel. Yes, I, you know, I'm 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 tempering my expectations, but man, I want that to do well. Right, same, same. I mean, they're they're trying new stuff, so yeah. that's what's kind of cool. You know what I mean? It's like it, and with you know with Endgame, it's like okay, we're kind of wrapping up the first three phases, so now they can kind of do different things. Yeah, and it's like, dude, come on, Daredevil yeah. was awesome. How do we make this happen? Bring, <laughs> bring the hand back. Okay. Jessica Henwick is awesome. Give she her was. more jobs. <laughs> yes. I hope she, I hope she uh, finds a way to make it back into the Marvel Universe. Right? I mean, we never know. Disney Plus is coming out. So yeah. Disney owns Marvel. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Fingers crossed, Jeff. <laughs> it's, it's exciting. It'll happen. I think so, too. It's a, And, yeah. like, now's the time. And, it, like, like I said, there's a new It Man coming out with Donnie Yen. Yep. I'm beside yep. myself. I just watched The Raid for the first time. The first time? Oh. Yes, I know, right? I get that a lot. Whew. Wow. My God, that oh, one! Sheesh! I yeah. haven't seen the second one yet. I'm trying to find it because I think uh, the first one I found on like Netflix or something like that. Yeah. But who? Man, that dude with the uh, I forget his name. I feel terrible. His character's name is Mad Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're in. Oh, oh man, the light bulb in the neck, oh, and he's yeah. still fighting, and he's like a little dude, and he's taking on. Yeah. D- oh man. Wow, if, I was if not anybody's going to be named Mad Dog, it's that guy. I know. Yeah, yeah. He even looks like it. <laughs> oh, so it's like good. one of those like Chihuahuas are deceptively yeah. dangerous. Yeah, they, that, they just don't stop attacking. That's this guy, yeah. and he won't die. That's the other thing. I remember when we were watching it. You're like, you think he's down, and you're like, oh, man, he's still kicking. Like literally kicking. That's nuts. Yeah. If uh, you, well, you have Netflix, so um, check out the night comes for us too. The night comes for us. I'm ready to stop. Check that, out the night that was my next question. What kind of recommendations you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> so check out the night comes for us. Okay. Um, it's from the the some of the same people that made the raid, but Joe Taslim, who plays the cop in the raid. Yes. Uh, that that's Mad Dog. Sweet. Uh, he's uh, the star of the night comes for us. Oh, um, sweet. And it that's just raw action. The the night comes for us is awesome. But um, and definitely sweet. check out Warrior. Warrior is good stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So this good, this good stuff coming. This good stuff. Anything, anything. I mean, I've mentioned it a lot of times. I'm a pretty big Donnie Yen fan. You know, so, <laughs> so he's I just, doing a lot of stuff. He's doing I, a ton of stuff. Um, he's got Big Brother coming. Uh, big Brother is, uh, but it's it's they're not going to get released here. So you're going to have yeah, to hunt for them. I'm going to have Big Brother Black is Market out. It up. <laughs> yeah, big Brother's out. He's also 
He also redid Enter the Fat Dragon. I saw. I saw. <laughs> He's one of those that just likes to work. It's like yeah. Jackie Chan in his prime. He was just pumping them out all the time. Like, <laughs> dude, he has his own stunt team that's like legendary, you yeah. know, generations long. It's like these are people who have put their lives on the line to fly down a light bulb tube for your entertainment. Welcome the Jackie Chan stunt team. Yeah. I'm like, yep, 100%. Every one of them <laughs> can use a chair as a weapon. And I love it. But, dude, I'm so, I'm so excited. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Should be. I know. I know. But uh, so your podcast is yeah. the Kung Fu Drive-In Podcast. The Kung Fu Drive-In Podcast. And it's so good. And Thank you. would you believe we've been talking for almost an hour? <laughs> dude, that's, feels like that. that may have been the, sh- the fastest hour I've ever had with anyone. <laughs> Goodness. No, this was, was good fun. Time. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. On what will undoubtedly be your lowest rated show ever. Oh, challenge accepted, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about oh, he... me. No one cares. This is the interesting podcast. You've probably never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear the word niche and I'm like, all right, I see your niche. I'll give you the niche. Okay. <laughs> Good luck finding this. <laughs> Now, you've had some great people on your show. Awesome yeah, people. they're so dumb. Um, this what episode is not one of them, but <laughs> yeah. you've had some great people on your show. Oh, please. I really have. I don't know who keeps letting me talk to these people. <laughs> that's the crazy part. That, that's the best part about having nobody know who you are. You're like, you can kind of sneak in. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, hey, I can promise a good time. Not yeah. not, not like that. Hold on. Wait. Let me start over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, maybe. Do you want to come on the show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, dude, well, this was really, really fun. Yeah, thank you. That, it really was a lot of fun. I, I appreciate you reaching out. Of course, of course. So the dri- the Kung Fu Drive-In Podcast is your show. Yes. Where can people find you online? Uh, online, uh, I am on all of the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, at Kung Fu Drive-In, or at Kung Fu Drive-In Podcast. One of those two will work. Um, I'm active, most active on Twitter. Uh, Instagram, I do post quite a bit as well. So if you, if you catch me on either one of those, Hit me up. Yeah. You can email me at driving at gmail.com. Um, I, I met Brian here on Facebook, so uh, I do keep That's that true. page up to date as well. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can catch the podcast uh, anywhere that uh, you're listening to this podcast right here, right now. Yeah. All that good stuff. <laughs> awesome. Dude, this was super great. Come back anytime. If you got some cool awesome. stuff you Thank want to talk so about, much. I got you, man. Appreciate it. Right, and check out those shows and, and hit me up and let me know. 100%. And... Sweet. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites, as well as BrianBalance.com. That is balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. That's right. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows, you can now do that at patreon.com slash JediBrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, and Victor. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>